Welcome into the doors of Psychic Experience and Star People. Thank you for tuning in. Ask, and you will be given what you ask for. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. Anyone who seeks, finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. And the truth within your higher self will be revealed to you. Come with us now, and go with us where. Angels come, and so can you. Welcome to our show, Psychic Experiences Star People. This show is being presented by the First Spiritual Church in San Diego in the City Heights area, one block south of University Avenue. And it's a church where angels come, and so can you any Sunday. Tonight we're doing show 130. I am Reverend Doris Horvath, a co-producer and host. I want to tell you that the contents of this show are metaphysical, spiritual, and educational. If you are looking for a church that has unusual vibrations, the First Spiritual Church may be your answer. We have a very different approach to religion. We believe in life after death, continuation and communication with spirit after death. Our church is also a healing and teaching church. Every Sunday morning we offer aura healing, spiritual music, and interesting and enlightening lectures. Followed by spiritual psychic messages. And in the afternoon we have delicious luncheons, workshops, classes, Reiki healing, and more. Well, if you're looking for something that's different than the fundamental churches, which made me go to sleep, this may be your answer. We also have a Children's Lyceum the first Sunday of each month. And this is from 10.45 a.m. to the end of the service. You can come to our meetings any Sunday in the City Heights area of San Diego. And I'm not going to give the phone number right now. You can get it at the end of the show. That's also how you can find out about our guests. Tonight our guest is Cece Stevens. And I'd like to give her a chance to say hello to the audience. Hello. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about CC before we go into more of what she does. CC Stevens grew up surrounded in interest with astrology and UFOs. CC became strongly interested in metaphysics and all the realms when she was just 10 years old. By the age of 12, she had begun training in all matters. At 16, she took a serious interest in astrology, numerology, and magnetic healing. She is an adept in astrology, numerology, biomagnetic healing, neurolinguistic healing, spiritualists, and dowsing. CC is a natural clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentive. CC has stayed with Steve Cozy and relocation charts. Jim Lewis and Astro Cartographic Charts, Rob Han and Composite Charts, and Noel Tai for Astrology. Cece has several books that she has written on the subject of astrology and numerology, and also makes tools for astrology, numerology, and dowsing rods. To name a few of her books, the first one is Astro Magnetic Cards of Fate, Next Mysteries of the Ancients, the third 90 degree dial aspect finder and astro magic calculator. Uh, I'm going to be asking her questions because that's the best way for you and the audience to learn more about all of this, about what she really is doing. We have on the table tonight, we have two crystal skulls. CC owns 13 of them. Now I'm going to ask some questions about this. And a little bit later we're going to zoom in on them 
so you can get an idea of what they really look like. They're really fascinating. So you see, what do you do as organization of these crystal skulls, events, and what do you hope to see or obtain by this? I have, <coughs> excuse me, organized crystal skull events that I've put together um, in four different ones. And what I'm trying to do is put something together to help people on the Mayan calendar and what we're bringing into in 2012 mm -hmm. of a better understanding. We're in a situation where with the world it seems to be everything is out, just out of sync and out of control. And so they're in sitting in a line one day, I heard a gentleman talk and say, it doesn't matter because it's all going to end in 2012. Uh -huh. So in looking at that, it was, how can we sit there and think there's nothing left to look forward to? And I don't that's believe what, it. Right, exactly. And that's what perpetuated me forward to putting together conferences and helping people to enlighten them up, to make, bring the knowledge out there. Okay. What causes the current interest in crystal skulls? Current interest, a lot of it is with the movies that's gone out there, the movie like industry. Harrison Ford movie? Harrison Ford and the Crystal Skulls, correct. Right. Um, and then we have 2012 is another movie that's come out. <coughs> um, then to all of this, uh, it's brought people out wanting to be able to find more information. Okay, is there any idea how big the interest in <laughs> Crystal Skulls is at the present? I would say this is a worldwide phenomenon going on right now. Okay. At this point, we would like to get a closer look at these skulls so our audience can get an appreciation of exactly what she's talking about. The one is black and one is crystal color and we would like to see them a little bit closer for the audience. So we're going to zoom in on them one at a time so you can get a chance to really see them. Okay, one at a time here. <coughs> All right. The one you're looking at right here is Mogamba. All right. Mogamba is a obsidian, rainbow obsidian is what it's called. <coughs> and the, um, it's like the Apache tear. And Mogamba represents the earth. And so when I came together with him, he was my, my, one of my last ones that I acquired. And he was about bringing people together grounding, finding that grounding down with them, being able to ground themselves to the earth. Okay, now let's go to the other one over here. And then the other one that we have here is Bob, and this is Bob the Skull of Wishes. He has very, very expressive eyes. Got, he does. And you know, an interesting thing about Bob is a lot of people, when they touch him, when Bob's awake, he's body temperature. And so that's kind of an interesting phenomenon with him. Yes. He also carries a tremendous amount of energy. Those that have held Bob and made qu uh, wishes to him have had their wishes granted, and that's why he's called Bob the Skull of Wishes. I'm going to ask him to grant me a wish All right. later. <laughs> All right. Now, now Bob is B-O-B, -B, and it's an acronym that, um, in coming together with the name, my husband actually gave it to me and saying, well, I understand Bob. I said, what is it? He says, Bob is brings out the best, which Bob does. All right. I like his eyes. <laughs> Where have crystal skulls been found? The crystal skulls have been found all over the world, um, different locations. We have those in South America, which look like these. And then we have those in the Orient. Uh, there's the Mongolian style. And then there are the skulls of this variety. The Orient ones have what a, a lower jaw, an upper jaw, and then an extra, what appears to be an extra set of teeth up above that one. Okay. And what they believe is that this is sacred knowledge uh -huh. coming in from the higher above is being brought to them. Okay. How many crystal skulls <laughs> do you have for the present time? I have a total of 14. 14. All right. We have a picture of these skulls here that we'd like you to zoom in to. This is um, music that the CEC has produced just in one day's time. And all the crystal skulls are in this on, on the 
jacket of this DVD. They're all sitting near the fireplace, all together. It's called Tribute to GK. Tribute to GK. And this was put together, the, having to come up with an album name was kind of the silly portion of it. The Awakening was the album itself, though. <clears throat> In doing this, we've come together with the flute, didgeridoo, the crystal bowls, chimes, thunder my drum, and all of this was brought together in music that I was hearing in my head all right. and called The Awakening. And this is what started all of the conferences, was this right here. Okay. It, to awaken in the music that was with it. Now, can you easily dif differentiate between contemporary and older skulls? Um, do looking at with the tools, the yeah. toolmanship that's done on this one. You can easily see where they have been cut out, laser cut on there. Mm -hmm. This is the older ones, when you take a look at it, they've got more of a rough carving to them mm -hmm. that's coming in, more of a, a hand-drawn chiseling that you can see to it that's done it. Okay. I think a lot of the Mongolian skulls that you've seen has more of that older flavor to it. All right. I have to say, if I may, to all the skulls that I've come across, and with my 999 conference, I had the world's largest crystal skull collection. From all over the world, I brought speakers, 18 different speakers from around the world. One speaker that I came across, a Jennifer Welch out of South Africa, mm -hmm. who brought in what appeared to be a small Mongolian skull mm -hmm. and a round disc. And I would say, with everything I believe in, hers is one of the original 13. Okay. Does it make a difference for people what material the crystal skulls are made from? No. Okay. All skulls have a vibration that they bring with them, mm -hmm. um, like hematite is drawing negative energy out, mm -hmm. where the crystal itself is one that is magnetizing. To to is that the right word to magnetize to? I believe so. Okay. Does material make a difference in the quality of the crystal skull? I don't think it really makes a difference. No, because it's what the energy that you're bringing to it. Okay. Now, I'm sure that that people would really like to hear this part because there's a lot of people in our area that are interested in meditation anymore. What is the benefit of meditating with crystal skulls? I feel that a crystal is going to absorb and transmit out, as you know, the transmitters and receivers. Mm -hmm. And by meditating with your skull, you're able to bring out that energy that you're putting out there. If okay. you're thinking positive and healing, you're going to send that positive and healing. Okay. All right. Now, what does it mean to be a caretaker, a guardian of a crystal skull? Because you've got a family of them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a lot of children. I just didn't know they were going to be so hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Um, I, you know, there's to be the car caretaker, there is those that to own a skull, one does not own a crystal. They do not own a skull. They're only there to be its caretaker to watch over it. The skulls have chosen them. I've, three years ago, I would not have told you I would have this many skulls. And yet here I am with all of these. So they've clearly chosen me for something. I, I have, have a feeling mission. there's going to be more. It's a good thing I bought a big house. <laughs> yes, you can have a dozen in each room. <laughs> okay. How many ancient crystal skulls have been found? That have been the, unearthed from somewhere? Of, of the ancients, I understand that there is ten of them out there that have thus far been found. Ah. Uh, so are, are they thousands of years old? Um... I, you know, I, this is a good question on that. The, 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 clearly the crystals themselves mm -hmm. are thousands of years old. Okay. And as far as the skulls, it depends on, you know, on the carving on them. And, and, I, and I think this is where a lot of confusion comes in when someone says, my skull is thousands, a thousand years old, and this was a hand tooling on it. Mm -hmm. And you look at it, well, quite frankly, for the, the crystal to be carved into that skull, it did have to go through thousands of years to develop 
-hmm. to come to that point. So who's to say that it wasn't used in ritual and in fact is thousands of years when it's only a few years old uh, okay. from being made. Do crystal skulls have an effect on ceremonies, if, such as if you were to be having a ceremony and you had your crystal skulls all lined up and they were right there? Would it have an effect on that ceremony? I believe it would. Yes, it would. Simply because it is putting out that strong energy yeah. that it has. Some people are, are quite receptive mm -hmm. to the energy of the skulls, where others may not. But I do believe in my opinion, we all have that talent. Some of us just are a little bit more blocked to it, and something needs to waken that point to uh -huh. it. I found in my psychic development classes that I have been teaching for years that most people are psychic. They don't want to admit it. Correct. They're afraid of it. Do crystal skulls really store information that they can give out? Yes. All right. And how do, how, do they, how do they absorb the energy, I wonder? Um, you know, we use crystals different forms. Mm -hmm. And the diamond, the ruby, the emerald that we use mm -hmm. for radio crystals mm -hmm. that we're using. Mm -hmm. and, and putting out and drawing that, it's got that energy that it's able to transmit and send. Mm -hmm. Using the same theory, only you're using the brain waves. We only use 10% of our brain. Imagine what that other 90% wish I could had be it. doing. <laughs> what, 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 what imagine the thoughts that we could be sending out and how okay. those thoughts could come out. With all that, what can we learn from crystal skulls exactly? I think the crystal skulls, in their way, can teach us to be better people. Sometimes our teachers can be quite silent and teach us so much. It doesn't have to be a loud voice to be heard. Well, it could just be mental telepathy, too. Could be the mental telepathy in there, no. correct? It could be that, let's say, you are holding one of these crystals and you put that thought and that form and that feeling into that, which kind of goes with psychometry. Right. And then you hand that to me and I hold that crystal, be it a crystal skull, a crystal point, or if I were to take off my ring and give this to you because of the crystal that's in it for the stone, right. and hand that to you, and you pick that energy up. How does that energy affect you in one way or another? I do believe the skulls are doing the same thing. They're giving that, bringing that energy over. They're promoting mm -hmm. it over. Okay. Now, I'm sure that those people that are watching this on their television screens are wondering, how could I go get one of those skulls? How could I find one? What do they do? Somebody wants to go out and get a skull. Be able to be your own caretaker. Mm -hmm. There is a number of directions someone can go. You can go to your local store and buy one. Um, or you can go out and uh, go to a gym show, pick one up there. Mm -hmm. Or go out and someone has one to sell. In mine, um, I, quite honestly, each one of them came to me in a different different way. Some came through a store, some that I have one that has a removable jaw oh. that came to me that looks identical to the Mitchell Hedges skull. Uh -huh. I call him Thor. In that one, I was asked, did I want to be his caretaker? Uh -huh. And there he came. So, so, you know, we just we just never know. Does it make any difference what size they are? No, she, and on your album color, some of yours are small. I have some small ones. I have some large ones. <clears throat> I don't feel that their size matters. Mm -hmm. It can put out just as much energy, whether it be a small one or it be a large one. Okay. Here's, a, here's an example. Mm -hmm. got a, we've got, what is the most powerful way to say love in a stone? A diamond. Oh, yes. And yet it's, we it do. doesn't matter how it's small or big it is. Well, maybe. But as a rule, if it <laughs> comes with love and it's yes. given, it's not a huge, but yet it fills such a profound sense of love within someone by receiving that right. stone. I think the crystals, you can look at it the same way. It's a matter of how you view it and how you see it is how it can be. Is bigger better? 
or is this is not. just as easy to have something small that could do just as easily the job. Okay. Do crystal skulls have to go <coughs> back to the Mayan people to fulfill their function? You know, there are a lot that believe the 13 grandmothers, <coughs> as an example, feel that all of the skulls need to go back to the Mayan temple on, on December 2012 mm -hmm. in order to fulfill the prophecy. If they all go back and originate back there, then of course annihilation will be averted. Um, and that all will be in balance and right with the world on that. There are those that believe that. I think that when the skulls come together, and in my, in my feeling on it, they all come together and all of the original are 13 together, then you have a mindset of people that have brought it together as well. And through that mindset, then I think we can send that, that positive energy. It sounds to me like you're being chosen. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, you know, I, I'm not, I, good question. That is a very good question and I've, I've thought that. I've, I've had some pretty phenomenal experiences since 92 that have rolled in and happened and since my move here, I've had some, in the last week, some, just some things that would, make you stand back and go, wow, because they're making me do that. And <laughs> you might not be too far off in that there must be some mission for me that I need to do, look at, facilitate, help with, or avert. Do you have a story about something that happened was a, that was a big wow? Uh, well, the first day in Hemet, we had an earthquake, and they never have them there. Okay, so you brought an earthquake to Hemet. Had a 4.3 right off the bat, which, you know, I woke up, and I was like, the bed shaking. I was like, I think we just had an earthquake, and oh. did you feel that? I do, I do believe, and they was like, no, it couldn't possible. I said, I think we did, and so then I went in, and I checked the earthquake site. Sure enough, we had one, which I thought it was fun. Didn't scare me. And it was, was exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like somebody threw a quarter in the machine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I got the kinks out of my back. <laughs> All right. How would you summarize the essence of the function of the crystal skulls as we're getting ready to close here? <laughs> I would summarize and say the road least traveled brings the greatest rewards and that these skulls are trying to show us we don't need to take the hard way to get there. It can be easy if we open our minds. Okay, what would be the easy way right now? There is the good question. Right. If you come to a road and one is bumpy and one is paved and it's the least traveled, what do you feel would be the road to go? The paved or the, or the path? Well, if there wasn't any challenge, I wouldn't learn anything from it. So you all. would say the path, or the path would be the way to go. That's what I would do. See, that's what I would take too. But it, then I found out afterwards, we should have just taken the paved road because then we don't have to go through all that. We can just take the easy route and there it is. Maybe the skulls are trying to tell us, we don't have to have the bumps. <laughs> we don't have to be kicked around. We can do it easier. Well, I, I feel like we can learn more by whatever it is that's a little bit harder than the easy way. And I feel like your skulls are going to tell you what direction you should go since you've made this big move. I think so as well. I think so as well. I feel like they know the secret. I uh, almost get an impression that they chose a place for you to be. That's what I'm being told. The house picked me. I didn't pick the house. They picked it. So they, they maybe they picked it. Picked it. Maybe they, they've picked, got a big surprise for me yet. <laughs> they picked it and they picked you too. <clears throat> well, I think this is a very interesting story that you have to tell. And I really haven't met anyone else that had that many crystal skulls. In fact, you're the first person I've met 
that even would have one, but you have 14. That's pretty fantastic. We're just about ready to close. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. I want to thank our crew for their dedication in helping to present this. Please remember the First Spiritualist Church where angels come and so can you any Sunday. And be sure to get paper, a pencil, pen, so you can write down the phone number at the end of the show. If you will just call that number, I will tell you how you yourself can call her and talk to her. And of course, my name is in the phone book too, but I can't say what my phone number is. But it's there. The church is there. And if you want to find out more, that's the easiest way. So God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure serving our audience with information that's so valuable and so different. It's like a miracle. So goodbye for now. God bless. Thank you.